water um, and consumer electronics, right? So fridges and, uh, and, uh, and uh, cookers and such things. So today I wanted to spend some time with you to share with you the journey that I've experienced with Hitachi Ventara speaking to various different governments as they embarked on this data analytics journey. And I want to set the scene for you. You've heard this before and everyone keeps saying this, right? They all say that data must be treasured as the most valuable asset that you have. We've got to think about this. Data has always been valuable and treasured as a valuable asset. But today, it is of hyper value for three things that I've observed. The first one is, there are many companies that start up without owning any asset except data in itself. This proves the centrality of how much important data is. Think about Cuba in 2015. Cuba 2015, when they first opened up, Airbnb had 1,000 rooms available for rent. 1,000. This was shortly after Obama opened up Cuba. Marriott Hotel had zero rooms available. Why? Because they had to build the rooms. They had to build the hotel. They had to build the asset before they can make the rooms available. Airbnb had first mover advantage because they could harness the power of data and data alone. The second characteristic that I've seen that makes data of hyper value is that it impacts a lot of people. In the old days, when data was available, you called up, let's say, a bank, and you realized that the loans department didn't speak to the credit card department, who didn't speak to the customer service department. That was okay. It only affected you, affected customers of the bank. But today, when the data is held in silos, the impact is on a much bigger scale than before. 